This is obviously a uh, semi-professional uh, job in here, the student life of DePaul uh, in 1941. The year before the war, uh, that fall, was the, uh, Pearl Harbor. As I say, it would be a, a normal period, the end of the Depression. And this is Francis Chase, who was a, uh, a junior at that time, and Robert Glass who is of the class of 1943. They are, were both uh, active in the, in the Thespians or the uh, Club for Theater, so I imagine that's why they were picked uh, uh, for this particular role. This is uh, evidence of <laughs> waking up in the morning in the dormitory. I was amused. They have nothing on the wall, which uh, would be the regulations. This is interesting. Uh, she was awakened at 6.30 in the morning, which was when people went to classes, probably at 8 o'clock. So you got up much earlier than uh, today. This is the, uh, the dining room at uh, Mason Hall. They had a, a waitress. The girls pray there, I guess, have a little blessing, which I don't know is, is typical of today. They are rather formal in their uh, dress. And uh, uh, congenial. And they had, uh, obviously, tomato juice. Mason Hall, which was, had been occupied in the fall of the year before, uh, this picture was apparently uh, taken, and uh, this is the outside, and the dining room was, the, was from Mason Hall that we just saw, and this uh, includes the girls apparently going off to class. I think their clothing is fascinating because it's so formal in relationship to contemporary uh, uh, dress, and uh, it was interesting you have uh, the girls emphasize more than the men and the dormitory rather than in any of the uh, organized units. They're going now into Asbury Hall and uh, the men wore ties a lot and uh, sweaters and uh, general uh, sometimes coats to a class. Uh, this is uh, Professor Carl W. McGuire. He, he taught economics. He came here um, uh, about 1939, uh, those days lecturing was uh, the norm, and he uh, taught here for several years, and uh, had gone by 1943. Evidence of the students, you can see, uh, wearing uh, beads to class, a, co a tie, and uh, as a young man, and a uh, sweater, that was typical of the uh, era. Here they uh, are meeting uh, in front of Harrison Hall, which had been recently uh, constructed. Uh, I think it uh, probably was just two years old by that time. So uh, the picture showing both our newest buildings. This is the interior of the entrance at uh, Harrison Hall. And uh, they're calling attention to the uh, engraving on the floor there, the ma the uh, logo of the university. This is in the uh, psychology laboratory, Dr. Middleton. That's uh, Warren Middleton. And uh, Francis Chase, I don't know who the young man is. <laughs> it's, uh, they're having experiments. Uh, the, the psychology emphasized a lot of the lab period at that time and uh, studying his reaction <laughs> to a gun uh, being shot. Uh, <laughs> we, I don't know whether this is implying that we don't know how, uh, enough about alcohol to uh, detect it, or uh, at least it proved to the fact that uh, our young people are not uh, 1940 into involved in alcohol uh, uh, if they reacted that way. This is the entrance to Gobin Church, apparently on a uh, chapel day. Here comes along the outside. Normally they were inside, but this would be good for the shot of the uh, Gobin Church, Methodist Church, with the choir uh, marching. Uh, Van Denman Thompson was still the director of the choir 
but Tom me, Tom P never marched as far as I know. But we notice a chapel, Wednesday chapels were quite formal uh, in those days, but were religious chapels. That is President Clyde uh, Wildman, whom you see with the uh, uh, red uh, mantle on his, his robe. I don't know who the other gentleman was, perhaps a guest speaker at that time. Here they're coming out of it. Again, notice the formality. A wildman on the right as he comes out. And here come our uh, dear friends, the uh, uh, having had a chapel date, if you will, in a religious uh, circumstance. Now they're walking along the campus. This is the entrance to Minchel Lab, the, the Noel Laboratory. You'll see uh, a glass here working in the old chemistry lab. And uh, despite wearing a coat and tie, he has a lab coat on. The, I don't know if they still use lab coats. I doubt it in the laboratories here in 2010. But anyway, they did in 1940. Afternoon activities. And in 1941, the year this uh, film was made, WIRE, the Indianapolis radio station, had uh, two or three 15 minute radio programs each week, which were broadcast from the campus. And this was the beginning of our radio program here at the university. So this was quite new and would be something that the admissions would be wanting to emphasize at that time. This is in the radio station, which was on the third floor of Harrison Hall on the east end. The whole room area was devoted to a radio station, and they had a sign on the air, which was outside the uh, hall in Harrison Hall. And we're having a radio performance here. The girls lovely dress. And it, it was not atypical, I think, of, of their dresses, probably devoted to the color. Here is uh, uh, Francis, I'm uh, being informal here, uh, in women's uh, archery. In those days, women's athletics was rather mild in the sense, uh, this, the theory was that women should not be in uh, heavy sports and competitive sports, but rather in something uh, genteel like uh, archery. Here we have the football team practicing in the, in, apparently in the spring practice of some sort. And uh, typical out at Blackstock Stadium, but before the stadium itself was built, and that was constructed in the spring of 40, uh, 41 and occupied in that fall. It was Blackstock uh, Field in there uh, at that time. Interesting helmets in relationship today and the track team at that time. To the west of the football field was the baseball field, and uh, those were the two major fields. Tennis was played up on the campus at that time. Uh, of course, there was no soccer. As I mentioned, women's sports were not, uh, and they were not active. Uh, so these would be the major sports. And this is a typical baseball game, I assume. And the crowd is sitting on a kind of a, uh, looks like uh, the, where they were getting ready to dig for the new stadium. It's interesting that you have in the audience men where, uh, there must be faculty members, who, men with fedoras, and the rest of the students are uh, watching. social world, this seems a little out of uh, uh, kink for the uh, 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 school week, but these were much as the, uh, the dances. I, I don't remember them ever being so crowded, uh, but uh, you have to crowd people in for a film. Uh, there's our handsome couple, and 
that uh, I don't recognize any of them behind, but I'm sure some of those people are still alive in 2010 and would like to see themselves. I think this is in the rendezvous. This is one of the campus uh, hangouts. It, uh, there was the double decker and the rendezvous, but the rendezvous on, on uh, Seminary Street had uh, these booths in it. This was where we went, went for Coke dates, and that's our thing. And this is the evening at one of the dormitories, probably where the girls are being brought back for and left off. And the girls would not have been wearing formal clothes uh, <laughs> during the school day, but this was very useful for a uh, for missions uh, film to show the, how the girls had their, their long dresses. And this girl is doing her studying. She is probably more typical, but it's time to go to bed. Notice the Art Nouveau, uh, the lamps <laughs> that uh, were typical of dormitory lamps of that era. <laughs> 